Can we start uh, rock and rolling? Are you in a symptom right now? <laughs> sure. So what's a symptom of anticipation of, of being the transgressor? <laughs> being the transgressor. That's what you said before. Bart was saying that Freddie didn't have to be on on camera. And I said that's because I'm the transgressor and she's transgressee and should should not be identified in the media. So um Let's, uh, I'd like to go back when you uh, talked about uh, having your head fuzzy, you know. Yeah. Were you still uh, at home? Oh, I was didn't before really leaving? feel to have been anywhere. Um, that's what I meant. I really had to get grounded being here. I'd been flying. Um, I've okay. Fe I've felt... Um, Sort of disenfranchised for a long time. I have not really felt like any place was home. Okay. Including where I've been living for years now. It's like a place that I live, but it's not home. And it's a place I go to, and rarely do I really relax. Greg, where is a home for you? Um. sort of somewhere in memory of my experience. At times I felt I had a home, and this has been a home. This has been a real home where I lived and I was in the moment and completely here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an experience of uh, being completely, completely here, but I guess I'm like a nomad. Um, um, Rosella, you've sunken down again. I don't know how that yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, much better. Because Bayard always tells me to relax and lie back. Yeah, it's just that if you, if you, your, if you lie back, your, you'll be out of the picture. Move your head so that it follows you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so you have the sensation of being uh, a nomad. Yeah, I don't really, that's just a description. I don't really want to follow that, I think. Um, I, I think it's that um, I have... I want you, excuse me, I want you to test, test something. Have you been a nomad in one of the previous lives? Yes. Okay, and uh, is uh, that uh, still influencing you? Oh, sure. You know, I, I've looked at this before. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of my uh, modus operandi that I don't put down roots. Or I put down roots that I can pick up and leave. You know, I, I still accumulate things, but I can just change. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gone, you know, two years, three years. That's a good time to be in one place and see what life is like there and then move on somewhere else. Yeah. Is it a good thing? Test. Test that. Is it a good thing to feel like that? I'm sorry, it's hard to hear. Is, is it, it what? a good thing to good feel thing. that way? Good thing. I'm, I'm leaning forward like I'm going to hear you here, but it's way over <laughs> yes. here. I, I can't. I can't lean forward myself. Uh, is it a good thing? It is what it is. Test. Is it good? Test. Test. Yes. Yeah, thing. I. I can feel. Okay. I can go into a situation and just be there and and sort of own it. Okay. Right. Good. Do you feel at home now? Do I feel that way now? Do, do you feel at home now? You feel at home? Yes, I feel at home um, wherever I am. Okay. It's, I, so I feel at home now. 
um, I think when I say I don't feel at home, it's it's that I have. It's not like okay. This is the center of my life from here out. Mm -hmm. This place because I was still relating emotionally and physically and and karmically to what I just came from yesterday in Chicago. Okay. So it takes a little transition for that to leave me or to change. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I, I, I keep a connection with Chicago um, because I had told my father I would call him. I said I would call him every day, but he probably would not recognize if it's every day that I, you know, I have things to stay in touch with in Chicago. So that's been a, a, a hold, a, fi a fixed point that I relate to. Now I can still, I can do that. See, I think that's, that's the dysfunction. I can do that and be there and feel like I'm there over the telephone or wherever and I will sound like I'm there if I don't have the dysfunction because the dysfunction is I'm not anywhere. Yeah, okay. I'm not really okay. I'm not really okay. Can you remove the dis dysfunction now? Yeah, that's what I'm was uh, in saying that that's my intention. By the way, when I'm most of the time when I'm talking, it's to find the thing in the, with the intention of clearing it. So when I'm okay. saying it, I'm trying to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the dysfunction? Not being anywhere. Okay. Or not being here. I'm everywhere, but not here. <laughs> yeah, that's what Byard always says about, like, if you're in the meeting and you're not paying attention, you know, you're not here. You're somewhere else. Well, I'm multitasking. Well, for many lifetimes, maybe. many beings. I'm multitasking implies that you're on top of everything, but if there's no such thing as if multitasking. If you're gone from one thing, then you're not multitasking. <laughs> multitasking, in its true sense, is the ability to quickly shift between things, so that you're completely present for this in a fraction, and then for this, and then this, because each one you're powerful enough to be complete with the moment and this and this and have it to a point where you can move to the next one. Okay, I'm going to put my attention well, on this. The, the studies they've done says it doesn't save anybody any time. You know, so actually, well, everybody multitasks whether you believe it or not because you'll be doing something for five minutes and then you go off and do something else. It's just the amount of time. Yeah, but task. when you multitask, you do two, three, four, ten things at the same time. And it drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, because that's crazy. So that's actually dysfunctional to have those many things on your mind at one time. And true multitasking yeah. is to have one thing on your mind and then shift to another. While that one, you put the first one on hold and it's sufficient so you can completely put your attention over here and then you come back. So, yes, it's just that you have a list of things. But in and of itself, that may be dysfunctional because to some extent, when I do that at least, I have the experience that there's this other thing over here that my attention is on. And that's probably what when people say about me, because yeah, I've got my, I've kind of, my. Okay, just let me ask you, are you leading with the mental body now? Um, yeah, and I knew it. Okay. Because I was leading back to it. Yeah, you know, it's like I want to lead back to it. Okay, let's, okay. So let's get my balance, balance of my body. Because so, that's what I was doing last night. I was working through. Let's all do it. I think it's a very good thing. I, I read the tweets before one of your tweets, uh, Franny, and uh, I think it's a very good idea. I'm balancing all my bodies. Okay. Oh, it feels good. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> you know, my bodies. Tell us when you've done that, as the phrase goes.
it's coming, I'm getting balanced. I think it's this finger, this finger. Mudra. So have you done it yet? <laughs> well, I, I'm doing my comical body, my body of comedy work. Okay, install. All right, install the, the install the reflex to uh, lead with your celestial body. I install the reflex to lead with my celestial body. Do you feel a difference? Yeah, I feel different. I um Yeah, I feel calmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I start thinking about how I'm different. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. But you know that yawning is a sign that something has changed. Uh huh. It's a good it's sign. Okay, now. There's uh, one, other, one other thing, Rosella, that I'd like to say. Yeah. I, I don't want to start you out on your mental, um, you know, body again, but. The whole thing about multitasking, if, you, if you're going to be in a meeting, that's yes. not the time to multitask. It's time mm -hmm. to just be there and interact with what's being said and interact with the people and whatever, you know, it's not the time to like make coffee or read your emails or tweet or anything yeah. unless we actually agree about that. Yeah. So, is that the dysfunction? Uh, is that a dysfunction that you have that you feel like you have to be doing something else at the Absolutely. same time? Absolutely. Okay. Is it a way of escaping from something, running from something? Yes. Okay. Okay. Did you cure it? Uh, just acknowledging it. cured it now, for now. Okay. I'm, it's still something that, you know, I have to attend to. I notice it when I'm doing it, but I don't okay. do it about it. Is if it I'm a symptom? If I still do it, it's because I've not done, done anything about it. Is it a symptom? Is it a symptom that I? Yes. That I notice it. It's no, no, no. Is it a symptom in itself? Oh, Getting sure. Up? Uh, okay. Uh, have you any idea of what? Do you, well, you could you could find out if there's something causing it, like usually a trauma or some. I've forgotten what else causes what turns into dysfunction. There's something. Uh, disease. Trauma. Is trauma turned into dysfunction? I think that's what it is. I, trauma certainly. Lots of things turn into dysfunction. Okay, so I would I would say that you should probably find. Out They're all causes of the condition. Yeah, like dysfunction is it's a condition of. What what is causing the dysfunction for you of being? It's basically being kind of distracted. This is where I could test down the hub. That's a good idea. Okay. Well, test down the list of the dysfunctions and then, you know, try to uh, read I, Well, I think we identified okay. the state that I get in. I mean, I can okay. see it. I get out of whack. Okay, so we have to find out what's causing that. Because 
it's the to me it's the same thing that distracts you from being present uh, like with me or being present in the meeting or any any kind of one on one interaction or one on one task so can you think of any traumas that you've had about that like well, normally with the trauma, you see, check when it occurred. Okay, so check when then it Then you is. find out what the scene was and what the trauma was. Okay, so Rather than just thinking about it, because that's your mental body again. Well, that's your mental body. <laughs> Not mine, but that's all right. That's one's mental body if you're just... But no, I, I can see things that come to me. Okay. You know, I... Because um, I envision... Um, Growing up in my household when I was young and being small and just escaping all the stuff that was out there, all the stuff that was um, what kind of stuff? Um, that was crazy, or violent, or um, weird, or you know, just not, not harmonic. Was um, um, I, I'm just. You can feel the energy. My assistant's bringing me some tea. Um, you know, I can just envision my family and the energy in my family. My father, my brother, I don't think it's so much my mother. That's hot tea. Yes. Um, I think there was just a lot of t turmoil in, mm -hmm. in this lifetime when I was young. I felt very um, good about myself and I felt very in touch. I was very aware of lying like in a crib, or in a, you know, yeah, actually a crib before I moved to a bed. I don't know how old I was. About, I was aware of sensations and the people and the energy, and I felt very good. And I okay. just took things in stride. That was good. But I think around me, my household, and it may have to, it may have had to do with my brother and my father, and and my mother's interactions. Um, you know, all in their dysfunctions, they were all older than I was, and they were all, it was all going on around me. So it actually feels good to be, to be that whole person, you know, be that baby, not that I am a baby now, and I don't experience myself as being a baby, but have that sensation of, Anything could be going on around me, and I could be fine. Um, I think perhaps when I tried to understand what it was, that that's when um, that um, I got the little haywire. Test tried to deal with it. Test. Did you say test and I'm testing? Test whether that was what... Yeah, it's true. Okay, yeah. It was just very sad and I, and I, I felt powerless to do anything about what was going on. That's been a, a, um, a theme in my life. Did you... How do you actually affect change? Did you feel, um... 
perilous in your relationship with me? I mean, do you feel? You? Yes. No. Okay. I have felt powerless. Do I? No. Have I? Yes. Um. But I would say that's been a source of my dysfunctions, trying to be powerful, trying to make a difference, trying to affect change, trying to be somebody that people looked upon in a certain way, or, you know, um, just I felt I had to um, extend myself in some way that it couldn't just be me, that I had to be, do something or act out in some way to be, for something to happen. So would you say you had to be a certain way with me? Um, I was not thinking of you right now, I was just thinking of my family uh -huh. and situ I don't think that of you, no. Good. No, I don't think that of you. Uh, think of more if I'm out somewhere in public or with new people or anywhere, pretty much. Especially when you when you when you say the uh, you you are expecting something to happen, you mean something bad? When I'm trying to have something happen that would be more to my liking, be more of what I want to have happen. That would okay. be better for the situation. Mm. Okay, I now feel you the can. To do that, and that actually has been very powerful. That I feel this urge to handle things, to affect change. Okay, now please test this. When you uh, felt attracted to other women, uh, was that influenced by uh, what happened then? Trying to make a something of your liking happen. Yes, it, it is in a, in a very far out, extended way. It's not immediately that the situation right here, but I've know that I've I wanted to be not just to be powerful, my own expression of it, but that I want to be seen a certain way, that I want to be okay. accepted and acknowledged for, and to be wanted because of something. It's like a pretense that I, I, I put out that I am, it, um, in other words, it's not me, but it's something up I'm making up about me, which may be grounded in who I am, but I'm making it up and putting it out there. So even though it's an extension of me, I want, I do that to have people attracted and like me and I quote would feel better if I were liked and wanted and acknowledged and that sort of thing. Okay, test please. Can you get that from Franny? Yes, I get it all the time. Okay. okay. Do you still need to get it from other women? No, I don't. get it from me, uh, is there anything that you have wanted from me that you didn't get? Good one. Don't think, test. Testing, no. I'm testing, no. I'm okay. seeing things that if you were acting towards me in certain ways, it would be nice because it would be all of this attention, but it would be overwhelming to the actual exigencies of how we were together, of, of like what's appropriate for who I am and who you are. Well, obviously.
obviously I can't, I don't want to mother you because that's... No, you don't want to mother me, yeah. you don't want to idolize it's me, you don't you want to me. fawn over me, you don't want to coddle me. Speaking the word we talked about earlier, coddle, we're talking about coddled eggs. <laughs> that's kept in my mind. Um, so no, you don't want that, and I don't want to be, you know, fed or pushed or, or you know, any of those things, right? I, I recoil from all that. Because it's like the, it's it's like I want also see I want someone to see through me when I act out. I want someone to see who I am. So you want me? Do you want me act. to see? Do you want me to see that? Oh, I definitely want you to see who I am, and I think you do. I experience you see who I am up to the point that you can, and that helps me to see who I am. Right. I think that's what a relationship is about, that we keep seeing who each other is. Right. So that we grow, that those abilities grow. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, it's very nice that you saw that I have, you know, when I made those signs, you know, that impressed you. To me, that was just normal. That impressed me. Yeah. Because that, that's something that impresses you, and not everybody does that. But, I mean, I learned to make nice, good block letters and spacing, because I have really good spatial perception. And not I every, not, old... believe me, not everybody can do that. I know, I know. <laughs> not even me. I, I can't, I'm a graphic artist, and I can't even really sometimes do those kind of lettering things like you did with the match marker, you know. I was yeah. very impressed. I've been impressed by many things that you do. Um, I suppose you know I, I, I've, I've been s sort of stuck in like thinking that you're well, like you're perfect, and I'm the one who has to sort of go and do something so that you'll continue to like me. Like I've been yeah. under pressure and at some point I think I sort of gave up a little bit. That's good. Well, Not no, that you gave up, but no. that maybe that you cured that. Well, did I cure it? No, I don't, think I, I don't think I cured it entirely. That's, the well, that's something to deal with then because I don't really like people who are you don't I mean, like me when I... I don't like you. I don't like you when you're um, not fully yourself. Like You're kind of cowing. And I can usually tell because you're asking me questions about something that really relates to you, about what you want. Uh -huh. In some way, maybe twisted a little bit. Right. Franny, yes. test uh, if you can remove it now. Yes. Okay, can you remove it just like you remove a virus? No. Okay. Um, can you remove it talking about it? No. Oh, my God. That's so right. what is this that you're talking about? It's, a, di it's a dysfunction. It's, it's a okay. dysfunction I go into when I want approval. I start repeating... I start talking a lot, I start repeating myself, I, I often repeat things three times. I remember, like in my mind, sort of noticing that I've done it like three times before I feel like someone might understand what I'm saying. So I tend yeah. to, with you Greg, I te tend to like try and... You put too much effort into it. I put too much effort in and you usually get angry at me. Yeah, I get angry. <laughs> That's, that's and I don't sign. understand why. But okay. I think the thing to say, and the loving thing to say is, Franny, right there, you know, what's that right there? What are you doing? You know, just stop doing that and take a look. Well, I, to your credit, I think you've been upping your level on that because I remember a long time ago when we were down at Summerlin Key, I went on and on and on in the car for like, must have been half an hour or more. Oh, really? And finally... You were just sitting there listening to me. I was trying to tell you this stuff. And finally you just threw the keys in my lap and said, Fuck you! And got out of the car and went in the house. Oh, we did that in Summerland. Very nice! 
And it's I started. San Francisco. I started to laugh. No, it was in Summerland. It's, I started, that was Summerland. I remember that. Yeah. I started to laugh because finally. You I said something real. Well, you you finally responded to something I was saying. I mean, I mean, in a way, <laughs> not only were you responding, but you were standing up for yourself. Yeah. But I want. But when you were sitting there, like you never interacted with anything, so I just kept trying to explain to you, which is like my sickness, trying to explain to you like how I was looking or you know whatever it was. It was like. You know, a relationship issue, I suppose. I don't remember what it was, but I just... And I remember another instance in the same trip. We, I guess we went with David Rosenthal or something. Yeah, we went down and opened the house in Summerland. Yeah. And take the boat down. We picked up the boat. That's and right. We had the van. We had, to, we had to jump in and lie down on the top. You know, one of us had to lie in the back and sleep. Oh, yeah. We had about, it was filled with stuff. above your head, you had about three or six inches space you between the top and the car. You had to kind of hold on to the roof rack and jump in with your feet first and then slide in. It was fun. It was a big van. But anyway, there was, a, so there was another time when I, I was despairing about something like getting through to you and you were just trying to, you like you were always sleeping. It just seems like you're always tired and you're always sleeping. And I remember my heart was squeezed like and I and I had this pain in my chest not a heart attack but like a grinding sort of emotional pain and I remember I got, went in the next room one of the other bedrooms and I laid down and it was kind of like I thawed out like whatever it was kind of started to dissipate and I warmed up like my insides I suppose I righted myself in my you know my contact with myself I was no longer at the effect of it but I have been feeling that the last month or so, that kind of really uncomfortable grinding pain because I was so uncertain of where I was, like what, where you, what, what was going what you on. With me? What, with me or just where you were? With you. In the world, yeah, with me. I mean, also like just it had other connotations about, you know, like, Obviously, there are things that we're sharing financially and all that other stuff, but and what kind of future did either of us have? But but the main thing is I just couldn't feel certain about what was going on, and I would find myself putting my organs back in, and that kind of like helped me a lot. Like I put all my or organs back. We did Russell and I did a session, and, and we looked at all the things that were causing, you know, that, and so I healed myself immunically, but then I'd find out something else, or I'd, I'd start thinking about, okay, like, Greg is leaving me, and he's, he doesn't love me anymore, and he found someone who's much better than me, just like my sister, and I went through all the trauma, I mean, basically that was a trauma for me, was going, when my sister was born, you know, I had to, I lost my attention, you know, I wasn't yeah. the golden girl anymore, somebody else even had my mother's attention and they just left me somewhere else, you know, okay, like, we got a new one, <laughs> so leave her, leave her at grandma's, you know? Forget about her, she's, you know. <laughs> my mother wasn't, didn't seem to be up to, uh, you know, poor thing, I mean, she just didn't seem up to, like, handling two kids. And then probably thought you would be all right, that you were, oh, you know, she's she's on her way, she's okay, and this is the one... Well, I don't know what they thought, but my father told me recently, when I was discussing it with him, that, because I was talking to him about what I was going through, I didn't give him all the details, but I, I talked to him about how I felt really fr frightened about the future and everything, and he said that he, he, when it was going on, like, to be a month or more, like it was three weeks or more, he started getting a little worried that I was, that something would happen to me, but he didn't know what to do. He just didn't have the skill or the time, and he was working, and my mother was home. So he didn't really solve the problem, but eventually they they did take me back, and you know when... Oh, when you're at your grandmother's. Yeah, and I screamed and ran from them. Yeah. That's how bad it was. I mean, my, my mother, my father said he was totally shocked. 
he came to visit me, so I don't think he was the one who scared me, but I, I didn't want like a, my my mother to take me back, you know, from my grandmother. I finally got somebody of else course. to love me. Of course. And I and I, I I screamed, you know, and cried and ran to my grandmother. And then when I left my grandmother, I had to go back to my mother. That was another abandonment. Like my grandmother wasn't going to keep me. My mother wanted me back, so I was like, and this went on for quite a while. And then my poor like an object. Yeah, my poor people. little sister was. You know, she was like, ga, ga, ga. you know, she was a very quiet baby. I was much noisier and bigger and everything. But, and then the, the other part of it, there was some other thing that happened at that point, too, that, uh, oh, my grandmother wanted me to be really good when my mother, t like, she wanted... Well, of course, she's old, and she probably didn't have the patience, but she tried right. to potty train me and make me talk, and, you know, she wanted me to be in good shape when my mother came back, right. and I felt really pressured. I felt like if I didn't perform well, that was death, and when I didn't perform well with you, that was, I was dying. I was going to kill myself. I mean, like, I wasn't going to kill myself, but my heart was saying, this is extremely dangerous and I was like my adrenaline was going and I was in such emotional pain silently that I couldn't even sleep sometimes at night and I didn't know who to, I mean I talked to Byron and I talked to the various people and that's what it's like, that was what it was like for me to, when you went out with yeah. other people and I, this time it really hit home because it seemed more <laughs> Real, like a real. real. Okay, this is like not. This real is not life, just not just just yeah. not pornography or something. This is like uh, a real threat. And man, I felt like I hadn't performed well, and I was gonna die. That was my survival. I mean, that that's how bad it was. I was really in pain. And uh, Freddie, yes. is it still like that? Um. Right now, no, but when I was going to pick you up at the airport yesterday, Greg, I was not certain where still even though where you you're, stood. Even though you were coming down and you know but it, it was like a shorter visit than we had planned originally and um, you know, I imagine you're telling, you know, somebody else that Oh, you're just going to come and work it, see if you can work it out with Fran, but if it doesn't work, that's it, you know, and that maybe you, maybe you tried to do that last time, but we argued so much, like, I don't know what, I don't know, like, why you were so angry, like, you were so angry. Last time I was here, I was angry? Well, you screamed at me a lot, and I didn't get any certainty that... Uh, I've been going through something, or not going through something. Well, see, I guess I just and didn't understand that. this is where it's a big that. change in my life, this was so... To me, it's been working out something that has been in there for millennium, you know, past lives and all, to, um, like, to really be here. Again, it starts with what we started about, sorry with, is what it is it to really be here, be my own person, and, and be effective, to really be whole and here, on, all the time. Right. And, and, uh... That, like I, I was saying, I guess, in the car yesterday, that a lot of this, the, the form it may take was really weird, but it was not, you know, this was a bad, but it was not killing someone, robbing a bank, nothing, you know, it's like, to get at something in me, I, I turn to a negative to try to get it out rather than kind of talk it out. And it, was, it seemed to be so, so deep inside me that I didn't know how to bring it out, or that it, it just, I, I, it's not that I couldn't, but that distance between what was in there was not expressed enough to be able to play it out or say it out. Yeah, because I mean, the last time you were here, I think you've had confusion about our relationship for more like a, a while, you know, because you've been doing this behavior for quite a while now. Yeah. Ever, actually, a lot since you've 
been separated, which in itself I think was very <coughs> is very poor because you if you want if you wanted something from me, it's very hard because there's a distance, and so you just kind of it's made more distance. It did not help. It it's never helps. Yes. It, it it just make exacerbates the situation. But like we say, it's not. It's to the right of the decimal point. The decimal point. You make more of nothing. Right. Well, so anyway, not even a one. You so know. you're over there, and you don't know how to communicate it at all like and, and we basically all we ever talked about Not as all but it's just in terms of this stuff basically all we ever did communication but it's not a verbal communication and not something that many people can perceive and see that's what we do often ourselves is that we are perceiving things that are not yet perceivable to the normal public naked eye and well and I mean, so my, from my viewpoint, there was never a peep about any of this stuff. All yeah. we ever did, discussed was my dissatisfaction that you did it and that you know you weren't going to do it again, or maybe you didn't even say that. And I said it was okay to have women's women friends, but not you know sleep around. And I don't know if I led you to believe that it's okay if you dated. I don't know. I don't think so. But no, I don't think so. I think that you just didn't want to say that. You thought you, um, if you went too far, it might be, you know, might not like you or something. But um, well, anyway, we didn't. Neither of us was able to really address it until it got to this really. It was. It involved, like, as Bayard said, you know, a karmic, another karmic thing. And he was telling me, Baba said, don't sleep with a lot of people because you take on all your their astral energy, right? energy and astral junk that's in there. And and then, so, but, you know, I faced the possibility that it really wasn't, like, that, you know, you. I, I always thought of it as you being... Uh, what's the word for it? Uh, seduced by that, into believing that that's what you really wanted. Right. I'm, and I'm I'm proud to say that you're stronger than that. So that's you didn't get totally seduced by that. Yeah, I don't really get seduced. I'm pretty darn good at that. I I know it, and I don't succumb. Right. So, but anyway, up until the ta time when I picked her up at the airport, I felt that same, okay, I didn't do, I, I'm not certain that I did enough uh, to really satisfy myself or you. And then when I asked you those pointed questions, are you really here to be with me or are you just checking it out or... You know, are you going to go back and start doing the same thing or go back to the same person? When you said no, that you were here, then yeah. that pain goes away. But I, I wanted to admit, I wanted to, what well, was a real struggle for me last night was to ask those correct questions directly without trying to say it some way where it wouldn't, <laughs> you know, um, or like tell you something, you know, like, or I was trying to just not be too verbal and go into a whole lot of stuff, but just ask you a question. And I, you know, I'm not saying that I feel forever like it's all settled, but I felt happy when I got the answers. Like I got certainty, and that's very important for me to feel yeah. like you... You know, I'm in love, like, we're having... I've not been... Connection. You know, you're really in love with me. And I have not been... I have been in love with you... Like that, to some extent, at times. But it's not been... That has not been my experience in life very much. It's been more wanting to have that or um, imagining that, yeah, that's part of wanting it. Right. 
who are trying to sort of manipulate that or get that without the actual commitment or the actual the actually doing it. You see, it's like it's safe then. That's what I'm saying about escape. I would have the pretense or the or the appearance Greg, of something. Greg, yes. can you can you please test if you've ever been in love like that in your life? Yes. Um, okay. There. Did it scare you? Yes, it was. It scared me, but it was also exciting. It was that I, I was scared because um, my normal um, defenses changed. Are we you know, I would about be seen for who I am, and I felt defenseless. I felt small and just yes. naked, and yes. that was wonderful. But it's also kind of scary. Uh, if I had to live like that, I thought, oh my God, how am I going to exist in this world, this doggy dog world? Uh, Greg, are we, are we talking about Mary? Mary, yes. Um, okay. I would say Kate. How about Elizabeth? I would say Elizabeth. Um, you know, before that, those were childhood things, but there were other girls that I, you know, just had an affinity with. Um, uh, there was Donna in college. Um, it was different, but I, because I never slept with her. I slept with, you know, Kate and Mary and uh, Elizabeth. I never slept with Sally. Franny, you met Sally. I met Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Like <laughs> totally different than Julie. She was. I knew her from when we were in kindergarten until senior year of high school. We weren't in every class, but we were in every grade together in every school. You know. well, Greg, uh, test if uh, being totally in love uh, scares you. No. Okay. I've, you know, well, who knows what it all is? You know, I, I can't put a, a boundary on it to say what it is. It is just, you know. Well, I have missed a lot of signals. Um, I, re I remember once you wrote me this email and just said, I miss you terribly. And I... I said, okay, but I never responded to that. Uh -huh. there have been why not? I don't Franny, know. Why, why didn't you? I don't know. I, maybe I get scared that I'll lose it if I make a mistake and uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't see why I did that. I mean, I just, can, you re can, you, can you just uh, be silent inside the moment and see? If anything pops into your mind, well, I guess when you said that, I was angry because you were you said that, but you were doing these other things. I was like, yeah, I can. What the I hell does see, he mean? I think I knew that when I wrote it that you were you just you know, not. Take it. So when did you, you didn't respond, I felt that was the same thing that uh, that you didn't didn't trust in a way and or didn't want to respond. But that was terrible. I'm pretty darn smart as you are too. Yeah, but that was really terrible. I just never, I didn't know what to do. I, you know, I just my, Byron says I just don't. I'm not empathetic enough. You know, and I didn't. I didn't Test. Test that, Franny. I didn't have, I did, yes, I did not have empathy with you. True empathy on that moment that you wrote that and I just, I, I actually printed it out and, you know, hung it up on the wall and everything, but I never really oh. responded to it. I, it meant some, it meant a lot to me, but I didn't respond to it. Are you in empathy with Greg now? 
I test yes. yes. Can you, Greg? Are you in empathy with Franny now? Yes. Okay. That's a good. Um, good test in empathy. You know that you feel what the other person feels. That you are aware of who they are at any moment. Well, it, and okay. also that it's in a very big way that you see, you know, the whole person. Yeah. Well, you. I mean, you've pointed out to me that I harden sometimes. Like I become. Yeah. Hard rather than I think than because stay that's soft. when you feel vulnerable. You get hardened. That's right. I do, and I and I flail around, and I defend my. I mean, I'm sort of defending myself, or trying to convince you, or somebody, you know, anybody. Like when I'm like that, I'm trying to convince you that I'm worthwhile, and I I'm here, and I love you, and but it just always seems like it's push like the thing you and the thing is going further away and then I get more desperate <laughs> it's like I say oh boy and um, I think about that now a lot like how can I be softer and how can I be more empathetic it's kinda like removing cravings like when I notice that I'm being that way I just gotta see what other behavior I can choose in that circumstance and, and Byron was very, I mean, I, I know Byron said not to quote him or anything, but Byron, um, yeah. Byron came over to me after my phone call one day with you because you were getting a little angry and I, I said, I said, well, I said, there's no, we don't have to get angry about this. And he said it was good because normally I would have just argued with you. Yeah. Or struggled with you or said, you know, forget it, something, you know, and. But I just wanted you to know that I was there and that I was listening and you didn't have to get right. upset. And that was probably... Because you were arguing with something that was not really about you, it was, it was me. It's just, it's just a reflex that we, yeah. we both have. You have a reflex to get angry and I have a reflex to either slam you or accept everything, you know, even though I don't want to. Or, you know, I do all these fucked up behaviors to defend myself against your irritation or my failure to do something, whatever it was, you know. Um, are, are you defending yourself from uh, some kind of fear? Uh, For example, fear of losing uh, the person? I have felt, Greg, that I was going to, I mean, I think I feel a lot like I was going to lose you, the, my our whole relationship, because you you know I sort of I'm not really sure this is true, but I always thought that it's possible that I actually pushed you into our relationship that you didn't really want. Well, in then the, that's something to ask. <laughs> in the beginning, because in the very beginning, but. Well, yeah, I can see you pushing, but you see, you have to, you have to give me credit for being my own person. Okay. Yeah. Be responsible. Yeah. That I manifested you pushing me. I've How did it feel? Uh, How did it feel, Greg? Um. Being pushed by Franny. Well, it depends. It feels not good to be pushed, but it feels good that someone sees me enough to want to interact and to go for something and to push, to say there's something there. Mm -hmm. It helps me, you see, in my part of my behavioral system is that I'm just here unless something acts upon me. Of course, then there's also what do I do? You know, what am I after? Um, but I, it, it, you know, so it may key into a passive aggressive thing in me rather than taking the aggression that I'm passive and I manifest somebody coming towards me and giving me something. I'm attracted to that in a way. Okay. So, see, I'm aware of this in me. Uh -huh. I'm aware that I manifest this. 
and I don't really, I see that it can be dysfunctional. I can tell that it's not really you. It's a part of you that you do, it's the thing you do. Well, you used to tell me I had the karate method, you know, I'd throw you on the bed. Huh? <laughs> karate method of relationship. <laughs> then, but then, um, then you have to progress from there. You have to evolve your behavior from there rather than, okay, I just do this. Then if that's, you're taking that action, then it's got to be okay. In terms of who I am, you have to relate to who I am rather than just keep being aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. I'm not saying this is kind of all just, you know, I don't have any particular instance in mind. Right. Instance. Incident. Well, see, I also know that having, you know, read some of the letters that Mary wrote, which I told you about, and I, I, I was feeling a little bit like I was invading your privacy, but they were, she's passed away and they were all like by your bed there and I had to repack everything and put it away. And she had the same feeling about you, like what, you know, what's going on and, and she would, she was put, she was coming towards you all the time, but she was very uncertain about what to do because she was pleading with you in some of the letters for a response. And then there was one response letter, I don't know if you ever mailed it to her, but you wrote out this thing about how, you know, you didn't really know if, you know, if it was going to work. It was very like a reluctant, like this is not really going to work, even though I think in reality you really did want it to work. But I you, did want it to work, but you, yes. But you I'm... were saying some the opposite. opposite. And that's, okay, so that's something I've done a lot of. Really, I mean, it's I, like, I was I was really amazed at how after all that, and you told me how much you wanted, how you were getting back together, that you would be writing anything to her about how you didn't think it, you know, it was going to work out, and you used to tell me, like, I just don't think I'm good for you, or I'm not appropriate, or I can't, I can't, you know, like I think a lot of times, well, this happens to men too. If they, if a woman is upset and they don't know what to do, they feel like they're not adequate to be in a relationship because they really, the woman really needs somebody who can handle this or help right. her. So I can understand why you would, you know, I have, I'm very volatile, and I can understand how you could feel a little bit intimidated by that. But I mean, I think everybody was. <laughs> But um, it's just, when I think of it, it's just, um, so it's kind of like, like, it's the, like, somebody, we were talking about how when you start saying you don't want something, yes. then you're, you're not really going at, like, you I'm don't want is, to, you, you can't not want something, you're already involved in it, it's the flip side of, you wanted it, but now you don't want what you manifested. Right, and and it, it's in a relationship. You want to ha you want things in relationships, like you want the person to support you. You want love. You want all the things that you like. You were talking about your ego. I was talking to you about your ego. Those are not necessarily bad things to want. <clears throat> if um, you're in a relationship and you're giving thing something to somebody but it's good to want something from the relationship and if you don't want it and you don't communicate at all about anything then the thing just kind of drifts away you know it's like yes and then when we were talking on the phone one time you know you finally said yes I do want you because yes. you know sometimes I just think well, gee, great! This that was happen. big for me, you know. Like I, I saw that. Wow, you know, I mean, I, I saw how hard that was. Because you know what I did? I, I did the opposite with Mary. That's right. That's right. And with why? Can I ask you why? Good question. Do you have an idea? Mm -hmm. No. It's the the karmic body. 
that seductive, what is it, sad, sad, um, uh, sad, sad justice? Yeah. Yeah. It's no, like, no, because no. I wasn't worthy, because there's something wrong. Well, let's, let me test this. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong in, that's going on, like, I'm not right, I'm not pure, I don't, you know, it's like, it was not, it wasn't are. my idea of how relationships are. There was something wrong that I was, so much going on inside of me that I was not right. I was not a normal human being. Well, I think your family compounded that, like where your dad would question you about stuff that you, like if you felt like you did something wrong, he, he would ask you and ask you and you wouldn't want to say anything to him about it, like reveal yourself. So I didn't want, yeah, and it because I did not take to the, I mean, I understood the psych, psychoanalysis. He was going through analysis at the time and was having a, you know, quite a time with my brother um, Greg did you feel uh, and do you feel do you still feel uh, that uh, you don't uh, deserve a test that one no I, do, I don't feel that okay no it's, it's see that's No, I recognize myself, and I'm living for myself. And I'm including myself now. This is what we were talking about in one of the last meetings, that I'm not just trying to get for myself and figure myself out. And I'm giving to myself in relationship to my world and the people and, and my relate in, in my other relationships. And I deserve it. It's just a matter of fact mm -hmm. that this is how you live. This is how you are a person. It, to me, it's just how I am as a person. Um, well, well, what I've noticed is it's been, been seemed to have been very difficult for you to be your own person and be involved with me and our organization and you know also still have all the other like the, your father being involved with all this stuff doesn't feel like it's really you and so that's been a big conflict for you seems like it anyway um, Until you started doing the acting lessons, and then what did I do? I went and poo pooed it somehow uh, in my inimitable, stumbling fashion. I didn't really mean to, but. I didn't think so. What you, I mean, uh, you said what I know is real, that it is. It's. Acting is not real. You have to treat it like real, but it's, it's a craft, it's different than reality. But it really is based on your, your acting ability is based on your reality, your, what you can live for real. But people act out what is in them that they've not had yet in reality, and it makes it possible to investigate that. And, and, and learn about themselves. A lot of actresses and actors are very shy and do not live out that in their normal life. But they, <laughs> I know. You know, Glenn Close uh, uh, was just saw an interview with her and, and uh, what's her name, uh, Joan Allen from Steppenwolf in Chicago. And I know, some people, I forgot what her name was, but she said people had to shove her on stage whenever she went on, she was yeah. so scared. But then once she got there and she started in, it was fine. You know. So it it's useful, not just as therapy, but useful in life. Yeah, therapy, call it that. But it's not just to understand, but to work out things and to get better at living. Um, but look at all the time we wasted not communicating. That's that's. 
when the communication broke down, everything started breaking down. And whatever all the experts say is that's why that's part of the reason you ended up in somebody else's bed. It's just lack of just yes. his, like being together and communicating properly and you know. Do you think no no don't think test him now you are communicating properly. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. What uh, has changed uh, since uh, we started we started having these sessions? <clears throat> we've been very calm in this session. Uh, the last we've had a number of sessions together, and I wish we had uh, recorded them some way because they were volatile. But we moved. I don't necessarily mean angry or or you know at each other, but more like it's stuff was coming out, and intense, but we were yeah. dealing with it and moved in big ways and very active. Well, I would and say our level of communication has gone up quite a bit. Yes. Um, and just talking on the phone, even not even just the last few weeks or mo a month or whatever it is, talking has been really good because I I feel. Like we've been saying things that we never said for years, or something. Right. We never addressed any of it. So yeah. I'm a little retarded. No, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> don't put yourself down. No, no, I'm not really. I mean, I don't think it's it. a. I don't think it's. It. I think it's just a level that we, like we're all. In our stuff and. Yes. We have to start clearing it, and most people, I don't know, don't even bother, but we have been upping our level, you know, like, it's like doing processes like Scientology or something, just going through the, the stuff so that the time gap is shorter and we're yes. more to, more pointed with what we're saying, you know, like we're, and Munich does that too, it cuts through all the junk and then you know you start really seeing what you see and well that's why the classes have been so good that Bart's saying because he's giving concrete examples about all yes, these things I mean unfortunately as the transgressor you've been <laughs> one of the prime examples oh that's okay well I I really appreciate your willingness to do that I mean that's pretty pretty uh Amazing. It's nothing. I've learned a lot. You're I mean, amazing. What I mean, it's it, it, it's nothing now. It would have been a lot in the past. But see, I've come to the point like this is life. This is my life. This is your life. I'm going to lead it for now, for me, for you, and that that's all that's important. It's not important what people think of me. Um, to them, they're in their own world and they will think what they want and they'll take, if anyone hears what we do or whatever, they will make of it what they want and they will use it for themselves or they will either see what we're doing or they won't and that's up to them and if they don't then that's up to them and if there's something they, it's, it doesn't, their labels or any people who are judging is not me really I'm fine that's what I'm saying I think you're very proud of what you've been doing because you have really upped your level of whatever you weren't able to do before like communicate or say what you want or whatever I think you've upped your level and I've been thrilled by that I mean you're th it's thrilling what you've been doing with me lately. It's made me feel much, I mean, like super attracted to you and super whatever. And even more frightened that I might lose that because... Well, you better watch it. Yeah. I'm just teasing. <laughs> because it's such, it's such a great change, you know, it's such a, 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 
a really great thing for me to see it. And I, you know, that's when I get scared I'm going to lose. Just like, you know, like we ha if I had to move from someplace. Well, we have to keep progressing. Right. Sure. On all the Remy, Yes. If you, if you receive the now, uh, a letter from Greg, uh, or if he told you, now he's there with you, but if uh, you weren't there and he told you, I miss you terribly, how would you react now? I call you up and talk to you about that, or to just say I love you, or respond to you in some way, which I didn't do before. Good. It would still be would scary, you, but in a way. But, uh, would you be pleased, Greg? Oh, yeah, I would be pleased. I'm always pleased with everything I get from friendly like that because I know it's true and I know how difficult it is. Uh, I mean, it's not in a way sometimes, but that it's heartfelt. And that's the thing that has helped me get through everything. I mean, you okay. me by being you and being the steps you take and the strength that you have, what you've been doing for yourself has been for me also. Okay. When you say you're fighting for me, it's fighting, it's fighting for yourself, but it's also fighting for me. I feel like I've been fighting for my life and it, I have been fighting for my relationship with you and it, you know, my relationship with you means a lot. It means almost, I just took it for granted for a long time and then I realized how much it really means to me. Like I just, I've taken it for granted. Like I've just accepted, okay, this is the way it is and Greg's this way. And I mean, you have to in a way, a little bit so that you can, I love you the way you are. And I do, but I, you know, I was I realized that I have to do something different. That's what kind of kicked off. I mean, it helped me with my dedication, let's say dedication to losing weight because I realized I was doing the same thing with that. And Rosella and I did a whole session we did we worked we've been we did a whole series of sessions on how to do something about my weight because the, my weight is the same, it's like a symptom of what I've been doing about everything including our relationship. And the, so, you know, but I have been fighting for you, I, I want you, I love you, and I'm thrilled when you're like really happy and productive, um, and I really suffer when you are not happy with what you're accomplishing, or you're upset, or you're angry, or you're going off to do something which is potentially harmful. I mean, you could get AIDS. I mean, you could, who knows what could happen to you? It's risky. And so I, you know, so that's where I am now. And the next thing, I mean, it sounds like all are, or we're all done, but the next time, if Rosella is willing, I really think we have to address. Uh, something about our sex life. <laughs> I mean, well, that's that's why we're here. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's but at the top of the list of our <laughs> priorities being here. I mean, because we've had you know we've had sex. It's not like we didn't have anything, but we there's something that we're both like up in the air in that. So well, I think it's partly because it's real. It's not just make believe. It is make believe. You know, it, you use your imagination and use all of you. It's not just. It's you're not a scientist. Well, I am. I am hungry for you. I mean, I am like, you know, the separation has been killing me, and you know, it's always. Anyway, I really want you sexually and also in, in, it, in other ways too, but I, but sex has been, and that's why it was doubly horrible 
that it seemed like it was easier with somebody else, you know, or it was not important, you know, just... No, it was too important. It, what was, was, too, it was more real. Yes. It was more real and, and you know, final. It's easy to... just to act out with somebody you don't care about in a way. You know, it's not good, it's not easy, it's, it's not as fun, it's just, it's escape. I see. And it's not real, you can just walk away from it. Right. That's what I mean. Next time we can do a session about that, what do you say? I think it's, I think it's good because that, that, the sex, happens to be one of the keys, unfortunately, to a really great relationship. It's, it's what every feeling love and everything is based on. And you said it last night, I said part of it, and you said the other part, which is that men need sex to feel love and women need love to, to do sex. That's right. So it's like, yes. you know, but women equate love and sex too, you know, so it's like, it's been rocky if we can't actually just feel free to do that, you know, or whatever it is that we need to... What do you think, Greg? Do you like the idea? Well, I plan to do homework between now and our next session. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, do you feel complete? Yes. Yes. Greg? Yes? yes. Okay. Uh, We'll, uh, will we have a session tomorrow, Greg, before the curative meeting? Oh, um, okay. That's tomorrow. If you want. If you want. I don't even know what day it is. Um, Tomorrow's Friday. Yes. And that will be at... Um, five. My time. Five, eleven, eleven o'clock. My 11. time. Yeah. Yeah, you'll five get to sleep time. an hour later. <laughs> or I don't know. If you want to... If you want to sleep more because of jet lag and everything. Why do you say sleep and I'm... No, he's well, going he's gonna to take a nice nap today and he's going to get to bed early. He'll be okay. Yes. And, uh, well, well if, when I came here after being away for five years, almost four and a half, five years, I slept the first ten days or something like that. Yeah, you stayed for a month and a half, right? I mean, I would get up and do a few things and I'd go back to bed, and it was just... Yeah. But that, is that when I lost the 18 pounds? No, it was the next time I came. My God. Uh, that's Byron. Hold on a second. Okay, yes, Byron, so. I'm just finishing up. So, that's the food. Sure. Um, Bye. I'm not sure if there was a question there. Okay, for tomorrow, if you want to skip tomorrow, it's... Oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, let's yeah, this, this keep tomorrow. Um, Did you say skip or not? No, keep. keep okay, he wants to do it. He wants to do it, Rosella. Sure. Okay, okay, I understood skip. Okay. 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 Now, the other uh, thing is, when next week do you want to do the other session with um, the two of us? I mean, we could also do it at the, at the time... No, I think we. I'm I'm free Wednesday or Thursday next week, and I still have my session with you on Tuesday. And the only reason I don't want to make this on Tuesday instead of my session is because it we don't have that much time. Like we can't really okay. just go as long as we want to go. So it's up to you, Rosella. Like it doesn't matter to me Wednesday or Thursday at this time. You tell me. You tell me. So, Greg, what's on your calendar? How about Wednesday? That's what we had usually. Wednesday's better. Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday, okay. I will write it down. Wednesday, same time. Right. And I will write it down when I get to my... So, it's 6 p.m. for me. A session with Greg and Franny. Sex. I was writing sex with Greg and Franny, oh my god. Uh oh, okay. don't let anybody see your book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to write because otherwise I, I, I'll be confused about uh, 
uh, Wednesday and uh, Tuesday. Okay, I'll throw away this one okay. and keep the other one. It's uh, six o'clock as usual. Okay, so and I'm going six p.m. Yes, okay. Okay, so you've got Greg tomorrow, me Tuesday, and then uh, Wednesday. The two of you on Wednesday. Okay, it's fine. Okay, good. And then we'll okay. see. Then we'll see what we want to do after that. You know, but this has been really good. Really good. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Don't forget to tweet. tweet. Oh my god. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. See you tomorrow. Okay.